there on starting too. So the evac really wasn't worth anything. No. I doubt it. It is it's good to just kind of help. I guess the way to do it is go pull it off and see. <laughs> go ahead and hit it. Right now? Yeah. You don't want to touch the wall? No. This is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today's video is about piston guided rods. And here in about a minute or so, you can hear me repeat that whole thing again. The reason why is because the later in the video, I shot it, but it just wasn't good. And I'd already took apart the engine, so I couldn't reshoot it. And I also don't have time. But this may give you a better view of what I'm even talking about. Whenever I'm talking about this piston guided rod thing, you're going to see it in the block here in a second. But these are what came out of my 477 big block Chevy that I competed in the engine master challenge with it. This is a CP custom piston. And if you look at it, you're like, oh my God. Because if you look at the distance between the, the pin here to the crown here, that's a huge distance. Most of you probably know that. The reason why is because that 477, this one, is a 4.5 bore, but only a 375 stroke. Now in this video, you're gonna hear about piston guided rod, and the reason for that is this connecting rod right here is a small block Chevy rod. This is a 6.25 inch length, standard 2.1 inch diameter pin, uh, rod pin. So the big block's 2.2 in case you're wondering. So it's 100 thousandths bigger. But really the point of this video is this. And I, it's really hard to see in the video. So what you're about to see anyway. But you see these? See that aluminum piece right here? And another one right here? It's really hard to see. What it is, is it is this. So these are aluminum washers that you have to sand down to get the correct clearance between my rod and the piston. And you can see it there. So when you're watching the video, you're like, I don't see what he's talking about. What I'm talking about is that right there and that right there. And it's just that, that's all it is. By the way, in case you're wondering some of the other cool things about this piston itself, these pistons have an 043 ring, which is, as you look at it, that's super thin. An 043 second ring too, and a three millimeter oil ring. As you can tell too, it's got some other things. You can look there, that's a lateral gas port. And if you look closely, which is the camera in focus, it's actually the CP groove, which is through the side there. The idea is to get more air back behind this ring to force this out. And this thing really did seal up. It took next to no effort to turn this thing over too. I might say, whenever you're watching the, the remainder of the video, you might say, why aren't you using this for the blower thing? There's a couple of things wrong with the piston for using for a blower. Uh, we'll go through some of them real quick. This top ring, it's really close to the, to the top of, of the crown of the piston. And for a blower deal or any power adder, really we move them down to get away from the heat. This way you don't build up so much heat, come together, butt and break. So this top ring really could be moved down. There's such a big oil um, accumulator groove in the second one that this could have been shrunk down to move this down. That wasn't done um, because it was run on NA. The higher you have this ring up on NA version, you make more power in NA. It just makes the piston weaker. Um, the other thing about this is too, for the power outer deal is the wrist pin. This is a small block Chevy diameter wrist pin, which is smaller diameter than the big block Chevy. And this same pin now is supporting a piston that weighs more than any small block Chevy piston I've ever weighed. 
This thing's super heavy because we look at how much material we're talking about. This thing's got some weight to it and it's supported by that same pin. And that same pin is also not a thick diameter pin. So definitely not good to use for a power adder for um, the roots blower that's going on it. Now the rod itself probably could take it. This is a 6250 rod. It's a scat rod, but it's got the ARP 2000 cap screws that I used. That way whenever I built the engine, I actually wrote the rod clearance on it. This one had 29, so 2.9 2 thousandths of clearance. Um, the bearings on it, just to show you, these are coated bearings. They look black, but they're actually that way because they're coated. Very little wear marks that you can see in it. Of course, the camera can't focus anyway, but everything looks pretty good. There's one little groove right through the center, but that's not bad. So very good. I love coated bearings. Definitely way to go. One other cool thing for you guys building engines, if you can get this, custom pistons, this is an option. See what that is? Which the camera sucks at focusing iPhone, you should have left it alone. That right there is called a cram lock. There. There's a tool you stick in there and you twist it and it, you just tilt it this way and push it this way and you can get the locks out so much easier than try using a pick. All same with getting them in. These are heaven. So if you get them, they're round wire but they got that little notch sticking up. With the tool, super easy to take in and out. My favorite. So if you're an engine the similar, you'll, you'll like these much easier than the other ones. Anyway, about to hear me repeat myself and you actually get to see this in the engine so you can see what these actually do. But now you see it outside so you can see what I'm talking about. And I'm talking about that thing, which is right there and there. And you get to see what it actually does. Hey guys, this is Eric Weingartner with Weingartner Racing. Today I'm gonna to show you what piston guided rods are because I tore down my 477 big block Chevy that I used for the Engine Masters Challenge. I'm getting ready to take it to the machine shop to have uh, someone else build the engine this time, just because I don't have time. But this can become a blower motor. But I wanted to show you this because it's kind of neat. You don't really see this too much on the internet, at least I don't. And you might be like, I don't even know what you're talking about. In most cases, so I'm gonna grab this rod here. In most cases, what you see is you have a, rods are pretty close together like so. So the two rods, say three and whatever this one is, I think it's four obviously. They're really close together. They might have a little gap, something like that, right? And then if you shift the whole thing down, you'd have the same gap. And what's happening is to keep the rod centered on the piston, usually the rods are themselves, the two rod caps are so wide, they're taking up most of this clearance in between here and there's only like a 30 thousandths gap. So I'm about the size of the shim. Now I've kind of moved it, but, and that's what keeps the rod aligned with the piston. It's pretty much the clearance between here and here. On this type of setup, this is called a piston guided rod. So it's not guided by the rod itself and the crank. Because if you look, this is a 30 thousandths shim. Way more, considerably more, and considerably more. Usually on an engine, like I said, you could push the two rods together all the way over to the side and you should be about 30, a little bit less, it should be. 30, 35, somewhere in that range. You're definitely not gonna be 100. So that's like 60, or I think that's 70 and 70. Um, you might say, well, how's that even work? How's that work? And that does not, it's not right. That's because it's not guided from here. It's guided from there. See that aluminum piece right here? Uh, aluminum piece right here. These are special. Looks like it's the pin. It's not the pin. So I'm going to set this down real quick. Move my hair. This right here, this little piece here, which you really think it's a pin, these are aluminum washers. And what happens is you machine the piston and you take these aluminum washers to go around the wrist pin and they touch the piston and then they touch the rod. And what you do is you sand these to get the right clearance for them. And what happens is that keeps the rod aligned with the center of the piston. So because it's piston guided, it's guided by the piston, the rod stays in about this place. Now you might like, well, uh -uh, it looks like you're moving it a ton. That's because the cylinders are cold. So let's look at this side, you can see it better. Everything's cold, nothing's warmed up. So it looks like it's got a lot of play. What, really what's happening is it's not the piston, it's not the rod so much moving because there's only 6,000 clearance between that. It's the whole piston rocking back and forth. Would you like, that can't be good. Once things are up to temperature, these are nice and aligned. This actually frees up horsepower. And the reason why is because the rod and piston is much more guided. So it's not trying to cock the piston and unseat the ring. 
this is what most NASCAR or high performance engines use is this setup. So that's what it is. So it's a little bit tricky. You can't just do another stuff, by the way, too. You can't just put on anything. You have to have the machines, pistons machined flat because there's a flat washer that goes there because that has to seal against them. Usually they're left kind of rounded. That won't work. You have to have them machined flat and then you have to do, and it does take more time for assembly because each one of those, you're going to hand, hand file or, or sand to get the right clearance of six thousands while making sure it's still here. The benefit, you're like, well, whew, wouldn't that mess up your oiling here? Well, actually, having more clearance here and here lets more oil come out and cool this rod. So the rod actually stays cooler because there's more oil flow in and out. And I know you're thinking, well, that increases windage then. I'd give you that. Because there's more of a gap, more oil can get out, cools the bearing, but that also creates more windage. So you got to do stuff other uh, things about that. But it's a much better deal. It's if you're worried about, like, well, is that that's scary? It seems like you'd have other oil pressure problems. Remember that oil hole was still underneath the bearing, so you're good to go. It never leaves it, no matter what. Anyway, I thought I'd show you that before I get ready to tear this all down. Now the new, since it's becoming a blower motor, the new rods are a big block Chevy width. So I should have backed up and told you this. This is a small block Chevy rod and a big block Chevy. Small block Chevy rods are like. 2.1 inches wide. I'm, I know I've said that wrong already. I, I know completely it's wrong. But they are narrower by a big block rod by about 100 thou. So a small block Chevy rod width is about 100 thousandths narrower than a big block Chevy rod. So because of that, that's why we have this clearance. So in order for it to work with a small block Chevy rod, there's just a couple ways you could do it. They could have machined the crank where it's skinnier this way or piston guided rod. That's the only two ways around it. Or, which is gonna happen next is, these are coming out. This is the small block Chevy rod journal in here. They'll have a big block width, so the width of a big block rod, but the journal of a small block Chevy. Because this is a small block Chevy journal on a big block Chevy crank. I probably utterly confused you by saying that, but that's what it is. You might say, why did you do it? Well, the idea was, since engine mash, we're trying to get the most out of it, this for sure helps not unseat the ring, so that makes more power. Having less friction also makes more power. Seems like a win-win. This is a smaller cubic inch engine anyway. The disadvantage is you couldn't do it on a higher, on a bigger engine because, of, or well, I guess you could have, but um, the only thing is, is like, well, then the small block Chevy rod weaker. The the weakness is not the rod; it's the cap screw, and this cap screw is the same seven sixteenths that's on a big block Chevy rod, so same material every two thousand. So yeah. Anyway, hopefully that gives you something about it. That's the reason for doing it was reduced friction, better ring seal equals to more power. But now it's becoming a blower motor. I need a beefier rod than this. So on Molinar, it makes a small block Chevy journal, big block Chevy width rod that's gonna go in its place. It's also longer because these piston skirts end up being insanely long. By the way, if you're interested in buying this setup, I'll be happy to sell the rod and piston, not the crank. Um, the crank's getting reused, but I'm oh, happy to sell it. These are 6250 length rod from SCAT, ARP 2000 cap screws. These are custom CP pistons. They're pretty nice. Let's see if I have, nope, there we go. But this is a 4.5 bore, 375 stroke. But anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Remember, I'm no Superman. I don't port cast iron heads. I don't know anybody that does. You guys take care.